Okay. One, two, three, blue. Oh, couldn't have pulled a better one. All right. All right, let's pull up our hand size. Remember, we're going to be up to not six, but seven, because we're in our very own key. All right, so we are picking our battles. We're not running away. We are picking our battles. Uh, first off, sorry, I forgot about this little thing. <clears throat> it's an ancient ruin. It should go face up, and you have the option of going to this. All right, so if, if we decide for our action for their turn to go down in there, we have to pay three red mana, and it will give us seven experience points. That's great, except I don't happen to have three red mana. I guess I could generate it, um, pick up seven experience points, but it won't. It's not enough to level us up, so we're just gonna walk right by it. And the cool thing about these is that you you choose to go in them, so you can just walk over them. So we don't we don't need to really worry about that. All right. Uh, let's see. I need to re-roll. And that's a great roll. I like that. And we are in our keep, so we get an extra card. So we're gonna be up to seven. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, and a wound. Okay, that's all right, that's all right. I can play that wound. We got ourselves a bunch of movement and a little bit of fight, all right? This is great, this is great. Let's do this. I definitely know I want to do a march at its full potential. I'm gonna play my wound sideways to get me a move total of six. All right. So that'll get me, what are these, hills, ruins? All right, I'm gonna say that's a three. I don't think that's a four, right? No, no, that's a three. That's a three, I have six. So let's reveal this last tile. Let's see if this tactic paid off. Oh, please be better. Oh yes, much better. Oh, much, look at that. Look at what is standing right in front of us. See, we weren't running away from a fight. We were running to a fight, and we know what to do now. Face down, face up, and it's time for a battle. Now, I don't have enough move to really get in there. I mean, I could. I guess I could, but um, I have enough. I'm not pressured for time anymore, right? I don't I don't need to rush it. This is the final battle, so I want to make sure that my hand is going to be ready for this. Luckily enough, we're still one. We're adjacent to our keep. So remember our hand side is gonna our hand size is gonna go up to seven. So I don't need to jump down there right now. Alright, and I, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to. Um, I think I'm gonna let dummy player take his turn. I'm going to draw my hand. I may flip my card, my skill token, and get two more. So I, I potentially could have like a massive hand here. Um, and just try and go down and wipe this dragon out. But let's just take a look at it, all right? Because um, he's got some interesting little marks on him. So first off, where's my little cheat sheet? Here it is. The first thing you'll see is this little man. This is, oh, this is the worst effect, paralyze. So if our units take a wound, if we assign a wound to our units, um, so if we're unable to block the full six and a wound comes through, um, and we give it to our units, what's going to happen is the unit will be destroyed. All right, gone from the game. It is our last round, so that's, that's not too bad for us. If we take the unit, all right, if our, if, if our units do not take the wound, and if we take the wound, the effect is that you, I must immediately discard all of my non-wound cards from my hand, all right? So basically, I lose my turn is what happens. So I will lose all of my cards, except for the wound, and then I will have to make it through the attack phase and redraw. Okay, so paralyze basically means you have to block. You cannot let any wounds come through to you. And if you decide to give your wounds to your unit, kiss them goodbye. All right. So this particular draconum says we're going to have to block six. Unfortunately, it's an ice attack. 
So the only efficient blocks are going to be um, fire and cold fire blocks. All right. Otherwise, we're going to have to generate double block. All right. We have an ice block. That isn't going to cut it. Um, it has to be a fire or cold fire. So it looks to me like we're going to have to generate 12 block. That's crazy. Or we'll have to generate um, less and have some of our units fall. All right. Attack phase. Well, it's only an attack of seven. The problem is it is, oh my gosh, it's so small, ice resistant. Okay, so all ice attacks are halved, and any effects that are you that that we play this round, all right, that are non-attack, powered by a blue card or blue mana, are also going to be ignored. Okay, I don't see. I guess maybe um, ice attack wouldn't be as effective against him, but, but we don't have a lot of blue, we don't have any spells, so it really doesn't affect us all that much. All right. He is also, of course, physical resistant. The good news is he's not fortified, so, you know, maybe, I don't know, we'd have to come up with a 14 ranged attack, and I just don't see us doing that. Just don't see us doing that. But, um, but it's, it's, not the, it's not the end of days yet. I think we have a chance against this Dragon. We also have this little brown token under there too. That's going to be that's going to cause troubles. Um, but I think we have a chance. Okay. Oh, except you know what? I just noticed I placed the tile wrong. Oh darn it! I got so excited. Technically, it goes here. Technically, it goes here. But that's okay. Because I got to line up the stars, right? Okay. So I had a move of six. This was a move of three. Right? So I think I will move here just so that I'm lined up. I mean, I don't want to lose, I don't want to lose my movement. All right. So I moved on to here for three. It means I have three left, so I am just going to slide here. So I will lose that um, keep bonus. I won't have seven cards, so I probably will have to flip my token. Oh well. Oh well. Okay. So that's my plan as it stands. Let's, um, let's re-roll this. All right, we'll discard these, and we're going to get to draw, oh, dummy, darn it, let me take care of dummy really fast, hold on. All right, dummy, one, go as fast as you want now, two, three, red, two more, one, two, it isn't going to matter, I think this is going to be, this is going to be our last hurrah. All right, let's play this. All right, let's get set up for the final round. I have a hand size of six. Just what I needed, because I've got to move into that site, which is great. Okay, I'm going to flip my skill token. I'm going to pull two more cards. Concentrate, my favorite. Oh, well, that was junk. All right, so this just means I can play move, two, influence sideways, and that, oh, so I also get a red crystal. Where's my red crystal? Let's throw that in here. And I'm just going to go in. I mean, there's no, it is what it is. This is what I've got. Um, there really is no point in waiting, and there's nothing else I can do. Right? I guess the only other thing I could do would be with this. Um, No, I'm out of tiles, so I have no more choice. Yeah, I gotta go in. All right, in we go. Let's see what else is underneath here. Let's see what else is underneath here. What are we going up against? Oh no, double paralyzing units. Wow, we're in trouble. Oh no, we are in trouble. All right, let me think about this. All right, let's finish them off. I cannot, um, I just, I can't take a single hit from these guys because they're both paralyzing. And because he has cold fire attack, I'm just, I can't block them. 
and still have enough left over to fight them. But what I can do, <laughs> no surprise here, and I think this is going to be Arthea's signature move, is plink at them with arrows, all right? Neither of these guys are sieged or um, fortified, which means they are susceptible to range attack. And as luck would have it, we managed to pull all of our ranged attack cards in this hand, all right? As luck would have it. So I think we're gonna be able to do this. We're gonna avoid trying to generate 12 block, all right, for this dragon because it's just, it's, it's ridiculous, it's too high. Instead, we're gonna get him from afar. We're gonna get him from afar, okay? And again, her signature move is going to be this concentration. I just adore this card. She's going to concentrate and cast her fireball. All right. I need a green crystal. Not a problem. I have one green crystal left. Let's do it. I get to play an action card for the stronger effect for free. All right. Which is going to be ranged. Fire attack three, plus I'm going to get two more points put on it. So this is going to give me a ranged fire attack of five, which is going to get through his ice resistance and his physical resistance. Okay, so I've taken him from a seven to a two. Okay, with these guys. Now I don't have any more fire attacks, so I'm going to have to go straight up physical. So those two points of damage. It's going to turn into four points because he is physically resistant. Not a problem because I'm going to play my ranged attack with a mana from the source for three and my good old cross bowmen. They're going to give me a range attack of five. All right. So between my Arthea's fire attack and some regular old cross bowmen attack, we're going to generate enough to take this draconin out before it even manages to shoot us with its cold fire breath. I love that. All right, but that leaves us to deal with now this Medusa. Again, do not want her to hit me. So I don't have enough range left to take her out. So we're gonna block, because I can get six. I can get six block. I couldn't get, couldn't get 12, but I can do six. So I got my guardsmen are gonna throw up their shields, and my northern monks are gonna throw up their shields. And that's gonna generate a block of seven more than enough. They're going to block, they're going to cover for me while I become enraged. Remember, I generated that red mana, attack of four, and we did it. We liberated the last mine. Woohoo! We had a ton of crystals left. And I think that's probably why this wasn't meant as a solo game, um, because obviously in a co competitive or a cooperative game, no one's going to liberate all the mines themselves, so you shouldn't be generating that many crystals. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. I'll take what I can get. We did it. We did it. Okay, so let's... Um, I'm going to add this to my experience track just so that I can get my final score. Because the great thing about Mage Knight is the replayability factor is that you could play against your score. right? So, we'll, so I'll tally up everything we conquered, how we did. I'll get myself a number, and, and, I, and that'll be my my goal for the next time I play. Right. And I think I'll do some final thoughts. I might flip this camera around and um, I think you guys might be tired of looking at my hands and, and tell you what I think about this game. Obviously I love it and you know what I picked up strategy wise from this playthrough of Mage Knight. All right. Great. Well, hello. I thought by now you were probably tired of my wiggling fingers. And for the final thoughts, I'll flip the camera around and say, hello, strangers, and tell you what I thought about Mage Knight. Okay, so first off, confession time, I love watching board game playthroughs, but I find myself just insatiably curious about who the hands belong to, right? I feel like I could pick people's hands out of a lineup, but I would walk right by them on the street. Like, I wouldn't even know who they were. So I thought, man, if you've stuck through this playthrough this long, the least I can do is um, say hello face to face. Obviously, I loved Mage Knight. I still love Mage Knight. And I think it's because of the challenge. I find it a very challenging game. And I liked that scenario. 
um, I felt like it was a little more focused. Like I knew what to do and I could stay on task as opposed to having so many options that I just get lost somewhere in the middle of the game. Will I play it again? Absolutely. I don't know, maybe even try the Castle Conquest. We'll see, we'll see. Because in this game, which I thought was really interesting, right, I didn't get a single spell. I don't think I've ever played a game of Mage Knight where I haven't at least tried to get my hands on a spell. Right? I passed every Mage Tower, I passed every keep, oh, except for that last one, and I wasn't going f down into the dungeon dens or trying to get the artifacts. It was just mine, 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 focused, focused, focused. And I made it through the whole game that way. So that definitely opened up my eyes as far as maybe I need to keep a little more on task when I play Mage Knight and not be distracted by all of the baubles, right? All of the monster dens and the mage towers and, uh, you know, it's okay to walk by those if you need to, to stay on your main objective. Probably the biggest thing I took away from this last and I definitely see why this wasn't a solo scenario, because by the end of the game, I was getting so many crystals from all of those liberated mines, right? And in a true two or three or four person game, not everyone would have conquered all of the mines. You might have gotten one or two, but you, should, you wouldn't be getting four crystals at the end of your turn. So I would probably tweak it just thinking it through, if I was going to play it solo again, I would probably tweak it so that after you liberate a mine, it would only produce a crystal for the next either one or maybe two, I would say two rounds, at which case it would stop producing for you. And that might limit your crystal intake as well. Those are just my quick thoughts for on the game. It is, I mean, I think I played this over like three or four days. You know, just coming up here, playing for a couple of hours, stepping away from it, thinking about it, plotting the moves. There was a lot of thinking that went on where I just had to turn the camera off and, and just ah, strategize. Um, and it was nice to actually step away from the game for a while. I think that was really helpful. So, you know, I think I would definitely play it up here again where I can get it all set up and left. But it is, oh, I just think it's such a fabulous game. In fact, so... Story time, okay, quick story. Um, I have two girls and a couple years ago we took them to Disneyland. And my young, they were eight and six at the time, all right? And we were meeting the princesses and riding on the teacups and doing all of the little kid stuff that you do. But I love Space Mountain, okay? I'm a girl of the 80s and for me it was all, growing up it was all about Space Mountain. That was the ultimate roller coaster. And I really wanted to go on it. So I asked my girls, I said, does anybody want to go? And I explained to them how it worked, right? It's a roller coaster, but it's in the dark. And my eldest was not interested. She completely passed. She would rather wait for us. But my little one, my six-year-old, she said she'd go. So I ran up and I had to like kind of like tease her hair up to get her to make the height requirement, you know, so she was tall enough. But I got her through, I snuck her in, and we're waiting in those long, sneaking lines. And She's getting quieter and quieter and quieter. And I'm looking around and I realize there are no kids in this line. And if you go to Disneyland and you get somewhere where there's no kids, it becomes very apparent. There were teenagers and there were like 10 year olds, but there were no six year old little girls in this line. And I began to think, maybe I had made a mistake, right? Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. But we got to the front. We buckled in, and I looked over her, and I'm like, are you ready? And by then, she wasn't even talking, right? She was kind of nodding. And because the whole thing is in the dark, I really couldn't see her. Like, I could tell she hadn't, you know, fallen out of the car. But I was, you know, screaming my head off anyway. And, I, and so I couldn't really get a read as far as what was going on. And so we finished the last loop, and you pull back into the lit, you know, loading zone. And I look over at her and I said, so what'd you think? She, her eyes were like, you know, lemons, right? They're huge and her hair is all blown back. She looks at me and she says, let's do it again. 
And I kid you not, that child would have ridden that roller coaster seven times in a row, except that her older sister finally threw a fit for being left out and we had to go to something else. And for me, that's Mage Night. Mage Night is that exhilarating ride that as soon as it's over, your first thought is, I wanna do that again. I don't wanna put it in the box, I wanna set it up and play it one more time. That's the sign of a good game. That's a sign of a good game. A normal roller coaster or a normal game, I kind of know what to do. I know the strategy, I know the moves, and going into it, you know, it's fun to do. It's fun game, fun games like Pandemic, I love them. But, you know, it it's definitely feels like there's a system to it, right? It's a normal roller coaster where you can see the track and you know what's coming. Mage Night is like roller coaster in the dark because every time you play it, there's so many variables that you never know what's coming next, right? I really think that Into the Heat card that I pulled early on, that advanced action, that powered up my units, sort of foretold, you know, what, what my playthrough was going to be. I didn't realize it at the time, but looking back, picking that one advanced action sort of helped dictate or maybe even just focus my strategic choices as I played along. And I sort of decided this playthrough was going to be a unit heavy playthrough for me. No spells, just lots of really strong units. And that helped me, you know, pick and decide what I wanted to do. But I've never played a game like that before. And I probably never will again because there's so many cards you don't use or don't get to, you know, to see between playthrough and playthrough. So I love this game. I have such fun with it. It's an investment in time and mental power, but I think it's absolutely worth it. So I hope you had as much fun watching me play as I had played.